Hi everyone and welcome to Buzz Banter. I'm Merlin. And I'm Mo. And today we're going to be talking about Monsters University. So we return to the Monsters Universe 12 years after the release of the initial film. You have all of the same great cast along with some new names. Helen Mirren playing the Dean and Actually, the fun little monster guy, uh, the head of the main fraternity, Nathan Fillion. Really? Yes. I that, was wondering. That was I'm Nathan like, Fillion. He's was, a... Yeah, it's like, yeah. He's, he's like a subtle but classy jerk, and he's got such a wonderful voice. I wonder who that is. He's and you know like, that, the, the, arti- the artist, um, Art. he, he's played by the guy in Horrible Bosses. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that, that, uh, I, I loved his character design. All right, this is one of the huge positive uh, points of the film. All of the monster characters designs from the previous film have actually been upscaled. So you got a lot more imaginative with what makes up their, uh, these people's physical features. It's no longer the guy with tentacles just has tentacles. Uh, he also has a bat wing mustache. There's an emo girl in it who actually doesn't have hair, but she's got her emo bangs because her head bat wings, she just folds over into emo bangs. It's, uh, they got really creative with it in this movie. Uh, Art, the character we were just talking about, his uh, character model and what they do with it, very well done. Uh, I, I couldn't get over it throughout this film. Pixar generally has um, better development in terms of animation than anyone else in the industry. Um, like, they're unparalleled. Yeah. Um, and you can see, the, and definitely because there's a 12-year difference, you can definitely see the upgrade in the graphics. Everything seems a lot more realistic. Yeah, Sully's fur and everything, uh, they wrote specialized programming that was revolutionary for its time back when they did this movie when the first movie released in 2001. Since then, you see how much they've improved from that baseline. There was this moment, the moment in this film where I I felt like, oh, you know, it, this is just such a generic movie and blah, blah, blah. And you know what moment I'm talking about, but then they turn it around immediately, and I'm like, oh my god, it's, it actually turns out to be really brilliant. It lives up to Monsters, Inc. Yes. Uh, you think it's better. I don't think it's better. I don't think it's worse. I think it's parallel. I think it's exactly the same. Fair enough. Despite that, the movie is pretty realistic in terms of its issues yes. and how they deal with the issues. It's it, it's a feel-good movie, but it's not to the point where it's too feel-good. Two things I really enjoyed about this movie with regards to the character design. For Sully, usually in these sorts of frat-style movies, by about the halfway point or the start of, uh, or about the midpoint of the third act, you have uh, the jock character and the nerd character just go, you know what? We're friends now, because we understand that we need to rely on one another. And they just become friends. Mm -hmm. In this film, that doesn't happen. All the way almost to the end of this film, Sully and Mike do not get along. They rely on one another, and they start to work well together, but they're not friends. Uh, And it's, uh, it's a very nice change of pace. I really enjoyed it. The other thing that I really enjoyed about this was Helen Mirren's character, the Dean. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dean uh, Hardscrabble. Yeah, let's get into some of the bad stuff then. Um, I, there's a bunch of like extra characters. Like the middle of this film is very predictable. It, yeah. follow, it just feels Follows like it's the going R-type. through the motions yeah. Yeah. And, and all this stuff. And you see where everyone's, it, you know where everyone's going to end up basically. And yeah, you, you, bas- you call but it, I'm not, it for mo- in the most part. I'm not too against predictability. And this is something <laughs> that... Uh, I've got into a lot of debates with with people because everyone's like, oh, I didn't like that movie, it was too predictable. And, okay, again, it's kind of a little bit off topic, but Star Trek was completely predictable, but I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Predictability, it's not about, and I think, it's not about predictability, it's about how you, um, what's the word? How you present that predictability. Yeah, exactly, and both Star Trek and Monster Incorporated presented it well. Yes. So that's why it's forgivable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, You have to have all these other things making up for it. Yes. Yeah. So if we're giving a rating out of five stars, uh, where are you you putting it? Oh, I can't rate movies like that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, 4.5 and 4.8. In between those. Okay, okay. there you go. Okay, Okay. (laughs) somewhere in between there. Yeah. Um, I I give it a solid 4.0. I didn't enjoy it as much as you did. So check it out, uh, uh, Monsters University. It's playing now. Solid film by Pixar Studios, and uh, actually, we have a podcast now, so you can actually check us out at buzzbanter.com, and uh, it's basically, you remember when our videos used to go on for an hour? That, only you don't have to look at this ugly mug. So, I'm Mo. 
What do you mean, uh, yes? <laughs> <laughs> I just have, well, I'm agreeing with both of us here. You shouldn't say stuff like that. <laughs> you just shouldn't. Like, just don't go there. <laughs> you're, you're like a woman. You're just like a woman. Just like, hey, no, tell me you're pretty. Tell me I'm pretty. Hey, <laughs> screw you. I have a fine-ass body. Okay, I'm Merlin. I'll see you all later.